Hi there! You are watching a video of above ground storage tanks in industrial plants. The code does not recommend or suggest any material for any particular application. The code merely states what materials are allowed and the requirements they have to comply with. To select a material for an application, the following should be consulted. Best practices and lessons learned. Authors of reference. Current publications like API or NACE. Client specifications and metallurgy specialists. The lifetime of an equipment in different industries is often reduced as a result of corrosion, reason for which special attention has been given to this study. Achieving significant results with respect to detection and control of corrosion is key. In technical terms, Corrosion is defined as the deterioration or destruction of a metallic material caused by electrochemical attack from the surrounding environment. In practical terms, it is almost impossible to eliminate corrosion. The effective engineering work in this field is more towards controlling it than completely eliminating it. Uniform or general corrosion acts evenly on a metal surface, which in most cases can be controlled providing a range of admissible corrosion thickness. The metal thickness will wear off uniformly over time, which is the most common and least dangerous from all types of corrosion. The contact of metals with different electronegativity produces significant corrosion rates when the fluid is of electrolytic nature. An electric discharge is caused between the metals, also known as galvanic corrosion. When the corrosive attack is generated on a metallic surface due to the flow velocity and producing mechanical wear, this is called erosion. Selected materials must withstand the effects of corrosion and must be strong enough to withstand design pressures and temperature, at the same time arriving to a practical design. In order to select an adequate material for a concrete application, the following properties shall be evaluated. Allowable stress, corrosion resistance, temperature resistance, and toughness or resilience. First of all, the main mechanical properties of steel must be known. The basic mechanical properties of steel can be obtained through a typical stress strain test. The diagram shows Point A is known as yield point. If the tension load is released at any point below point A, the material returns to its initial state without any permanent deformation. When this point is exceeded, the material is no longer elastic. Releasing the load on this range leaves the specimen with the permanent or plastic deformation. Point B is known as tensile stress and point C is known as rupture point. Interestingly enough, none of the aforementioned points is used for the design of storage tanks. So, what is the allowable stress to be considered in our designs? Storage tanks, among other mechanical equipment, must not work within the plastic deformation zone under any circumstances. After point A, the material has lost its initial mechanical properties permanently. Therefore, the allowable stress is always a percentage below the yield point. 
this percentage is the safety factor and it defines the allowable stress. There are two design stresses, the design stress, SD, and the test stress, ST. Both values can be found in Table 5.2 of the API 650 code. Depending on the design temperatures of an equipment, a particular material will be selected. The selected material will be able to withstand the maximum temperatures prevailing in the process. As a general rule, materials are used in the following temperature ranges. Up to 350 degrees, carbon steel. Up to 650 degrees, chromium molybdenum alloys and, to prevent corrosion, high alloy steels or most commonly known as stainless steels. In addition to the ranges previously described, there are guides such as the one shown on the screen, taken from the Dennis Moss Pressure Vessel Design Book, which recommends materials for different working temperatures. Brittle fracture occur due to fragilization of the material structure. They can be visualized as a piece of glass breaking onto the floor, exaggerating to keep it simple. This type of failure occurs at low temperature, generally below the design temperature. The most dangerous of such failures is that they take place without any warnings and the consequences are catastrophic. With the aim of providing the material with adequate toughness, the requirements specified in section 429 and figure 41 of the code must be met. If a particular material or tank part does not meet the aforementioned requirements, an impact test can be performed to accurately determine the properties of the material. One aspect that is essential to know is the designation of the materials that can be used in the manufacture of this type of equipment. Storage tanks can be fabricated from different materials, carbon steel, stainless steel, aluminum, etc. The API 650 code divides materials in six groups, as it can be seen in the picture. It is worth mentioning that some of the elements of storage tanks, such as the anneal plate, are defined according to these groups. The most used materials in the manufacture of storage tanks according to the API 650 code are those corresponding to the designation ASME ASTM. The most used materials are indicated on the screen according to the groupings mentioned.